So you are looking for that solid foundation that you can stand on. Um, we all go through this as people, and there's a few things that I want you to understand before I get into what that solid foundation can look like for you. Um, and the first thing is you have to have an understanding um, of how we were born <laughs> and not the logistics, the bio biology of it, but the fact that we as people are not born good. We do not have goodness as our foundation um, and people are inherently evil. <laughs> when it comes down to it, we are selfish. Um, we want the things that are best for us and a lot of times that comes at the expense of other people. You can see this in as young as children, you know, we have the tendency to disobey, to do what we want regardless of what that means for anyone else around us or the consequences. So you have to believe that we are not good people, we can't be good people on our own, and we have a need for that solid foundation. We have a need for salvation. We need to be saved from our inherent wickedness so that we can have goodness inside of us and that we can change the world, not for selfish reasons, but because we want the greater good, because we love people, and because we truly want to help people because of the work that's being done inside of us on our hearts to change us. Um, and so what this means is that we do need to die to ourselves. The old person needs to die, not physically, but in a spiritual sense, the old person needs to die so that the new person um, can, can be here, so that we have new life. Um, but it all comes down to, we need to understand that we are wicked at, by nature and that we have a need for a savior, someone to pay the price for our wickedness because there's, like I said, there's no way that we can. Um, there's no way that we can ever work hard enough and be good enough. Um, and so we have to have this basic understanding that we do need someone to step in, someone who is good, inherently good, and who can take our place and pay the price for our wickedness so that we can die to ourselves and we can live a new life. Totally changed. Um, so this is really the foundation for what we're gonna stand upon, the truth. So you, if you don't believe this, then go ahead and turn this video off. Um, and if you do, stay with me. Um, and let's, let's talk about what, what we can do. So it's very simple. The great news is, and I really love this, is that I don't have to work <laughs> to be good enough, you know, to do good all the time. Because the truth is, like I just told you, we are basically selfish. We put our interests above others and we don't love anyone more than we love ourselves. And this kind of thinking makes it really hard for us to live a bigger purpose in this life um, that truly puts others ahead of ourselves without having any kind of like, okay, we're doing this to make ourselves look good, even though we would never say that. So just to have the right mindset and the right heart, we need to understand that we are wicked. We need someone to pay the price that we can never pay so that we can die to our old self and have new life and truly go forward um, in a life of love and service for other people. Um, and so it's very simple. All we have to do is believe in Jesus. Jesus is the only one who is perfect. He came to save us from our wickedness because we can't do it on our own. We can never be good enough. Um, and once you believe that he is the son of God and that we need him to pay the price for our sins, then all you have to do is confess that you are a sinner. That's it. All you have to do is believe and confess and trust and have faith in God. And that is our solid foundation for which we stand. That is what I stand upon. It is why I can walk forward confidently knowing that I am following God's plan for my life and I'm not following my own plan or creating my own plan. Um, it takes away all the insecurities and the uncertainties of this life. You know, it gives me a purpose 
because I'm not here just living for myself. I'm not here just trying to create wealth or, you know, even create a legacy for myself so that people will remember me for whatever the things that I'm going to accomplish in this life. That is not what I'm here to do. What I am here to do is to step into the purpose that God has called me for and has created me before I was even born. He has given me specific gifts that need to be shared with specific people that he has set up before I was even born. So there are people that I get to share with, that I connect with because of the way that God has created me. And that is such a freeing thing in our lives. So like I said, all you have to do is just believe in Jesus. He's going to give you and reveal to you your purpose as you seek him and as you, you know, get into his word and, and discover who he is and who he says you are. So if you saw from this post, my first two questions are, who am I? And, you know, why am I here, right? <laughs> um, those are the two biggest questions that we have. And, you know, those are the things that people don't have in this life, you know, who are you? Where are you going? Why are you here? What is your purpose? Um, and the world tells us all different things of who we are, and a lot of them are not true, and a lot of them make us even more insecure than we already are. I mean, if you just look at, you know, Hollywood and billboards, um, you know, as women, what a perfect woman is supposed to look like and act like, Hello, that could make you insecure extremely fast because none of us look like the photoshopped ladies on the covers of magazines, right? You know, so if we're looking to the world for our truth and who the world says we are, we are going to be so insecure and we are just, it's going to make us feel like we're never living up to anything because we can't live up to the world standards, right? And that's who they say we should be. So we have to look to God. We have to look at what he, who he says he is and who he says we are in him. Um, and, you know, you can look anywhere in your Bible and you're going to see who God says you are. Um, first and foremost, we are loved. He sent his only son. Can you think about that? You know, just think about that for a second. If, if you, would you send your child, your only child to die for somebody who did not deserve it and who openly said they hated him and you? Can you even imagine the kind of love that you would have for those people to send your only child to do that for them? That's pretty crazy. And that puts it into perspective for us and how much God loves us. And the fact that he will never leave us and forsake us. People leave us and forsake us all the time. But God never will. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what you will do, and what you're doing now. It doesn't matter. God still loves you and he is always going to love you. And there is no greater certainty and confidence than placing our trust in that. That is a four-legged chair that is unbreakable, my friend. <laughs> um, and that is why I can do what I do and say what I say. And that is why I can walk forward with boldness and share. And you absolutely have that same opportunity available to you. And the coolest thing is that, yes, God saves you from your sins. But what he does after is amazing. He truly changes our hearts. And, you know, he helps us to truly love, to be humble, to serve, to be gentle and kind, um, and to love people in a way that it's not for our benefit, but for theirs. Um, and God has called us. And you don't have to have a degree or certain skills or anything. He is going to give you the things that you need in order to run hard after the greater calling that he has called you to and to do the things that he has ordained for you to do. And when you do that, the joy that you will have is amazing. You can't, you can't even put into words how, how awesome that is. You know, the, the fact that I can truly believe that every situation that he leads me to and he puts me into, even if it just feels like random, chance, whatever, you know, sometimes I get to see why he did that and sometimes I don't and that's okay. You know, it doesn't get, breed uncertainty in me. It just breeds more of a trust that he is always in control. 
He is sovereign over all things, meaning that he knows what's going to happen and he knows what's happening and he is in control. Um, yes, if you struggle with bad things happening, the thing that you need to remember is this world has not been perfected. Jesus is in heaven. He will return. But right now we are living in a sinful world, a world that is run by wicked people and we are all imperfect. And that is something that we need to understand is that, yes, bad things are going to happen. And no, God is not going to stop every bad thing from happening because guess what? A lot of people, most people do not believe in him. And when we have people, even people who do believe in him, we still mess up and we do things that are wicked. But the great thing is, you know, we don't have to earn our salvation and it's freely given to us and he's going to change our hearts. Um, so if you truly want to know more, if you'd like me to pray with you, I am happy to do that. Um, I'm going to post my phone number on here. Kind of scary. I don't know who's going to call. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm trusting that God's in control so that you can reach out to me. Truly, personally, reach out to me. Because there is nothing more important than this in your life. Um, there is nothing more important than salvation. There is nothing more important than uncovering and discovering this platform that you can stand on that is absolute it's universal and it's unchanging and unwavering. And all of those are freely yours to have and to step into. All right, take care, friends. And I truly hope that, you know, God is working on your heart and convicting you and drawing you to him. Um, and if you do come to a place where you understand the gravity of your need for a savior and you believe and you confess those things to God, you know, there is nothing better than that. And I can't wait for you to experience that. Um, and I'm here to help you walk through that. This is the platform that I stand on. And this is the most important thing. My business allows me to do much more and helps me to grow personally and professionally. But that's not the biggest reason for why I do this. God has called me to this to reach lives so that people will believe in his name and trust in who he is. Take care, friend.